Hi, I'm John, the MedPot Engineer Termel. And a couple of weeks ago, I got a telephone call from a distraught lady in London, Ontario, a marijuana exemptee, who was being jerked around in the processing of a new application form for a different grow site. They were going to cost her eight to ten weeks to process that change in their database and that was going to put off her grow cycle for months force her into the streets to buy her marijuana so I explained to her how the judicial review of the, the ten to eight to ten weeks could be a way of doing it and applying for immediate remedy while you wait and of course to include the threat that John Termel's in the background because many times they will just give up rather than be embarrassed in court by one of my cases so this is another fascinating use of winning through intimidation so that they see your whole cards that you're playing and you got the Joker and they just might decide not to fight you over this pot at this moment. So very often they will give up. On March 13th, 2009, Kathy Lewis, a marijuana exemptee from London, Ontario, called me to explain how Health Canada were jerking her around by taking eight to ten weeks to update her exemption information. It's already been three weeks so I told her to give them a 30-day ultimatum, our 2001 Justice Rulo ruling by Johnny Dupree and Robert Nero, before a judicial review engineered by John Termel in the background. The threat worked when Mark Pocket was being jerked around over his exemptions renewal just a few years ago, so why want not now? Then post her story at our MedPot Discuss Yahoo group, where we could all respond. So on March the 15th, she wrote, uh, we spoke Friday, March 13th, and here's what you advise me to do. Leave a detailed message at the Health Canada Call Centre telling them that I am invoking the 30-day ruling in the decision made by Judge Rulo as of the date they received the paperwork, February the 18th. They must produce the license or a letter stating legality to grow by March the 20th. If they fail to comply, I will ask for a judicial review in federal court and John Termel will be involved behind the scenes. I had the clerk read the message to me several times. He got important info wrong the first time and he promised it would be right in the hands of the bureaucrats. However, he warned me it would cause further delay, a threat she didn't take seriously. John, I've complied with everything they asked me for at some peril to myself. I want this license so that neither my new grower nor I are at risk. Kathy Lewis. So, uh, then she continued, my concern about the judicial review process is that it would surely take a long time and I'd have the Health Canada paperwork before that. I'd been advised previously to go for an order of mandamus. Isn't that the only way to get it done now? Tell me how this is done, please. I cringe every time I get the details like spelling wrong. Well, I wrote to her on March 16th. I said, go read my report on Mark Paquette's short notice application for mandamus within his judicial review at my MedPot blog, Message 25, where I had written, quote, the federal court allows for motions for immediate relief before federal court actions are even launched. So within an application for judicial review of the whole letter of exemption now being withheld, I wrote him a short notice motion and affidavit for immediate relief. So, the only way to get in front of a judge for short notice relief is to start a judicial review, then go for the relief while you're waiting. She wrote back and said, well, I need immediately short, immediate short-term relief. What should I do? So, uh, and then she continued on, on March 16th. Thanks to Mark and John. Is this settled? Can I submit an order of mandamus? I'll call John later and let's see, I hear from him. Then she continued on on March 17th. John Health Canada called me this morning and said the paperwork will be sent out on Thursday and I'll have it by Friday. That was the exact date I gave them on the suggestion. Or else they are sick of you. I'm good with that. Hope I don't have to bug you anymore. We'll see. Kathy. Well, those last two posts had been flagged as spam for some reason by my Yahoo group and I hadn't noticed. So I went and prepared an affidavit at this, for her judicial review. Uh, and I posted it to the group, said, Okay, Kathy Lewis, everything under argument will be based on your affidavit of facts. All the other stuff, notices of applications, affidavits of service, application record covers, is merely packaging. 
So the draft applicant's affidavit. I, Kathy Lewis, residing in London, Ontario, say as follows. I'm sick enough to qualify as a marijuana exemptee. My license for my designated grower expires on November something 2009, but he made a mess of things and I had to revoke the license on February 15th. On February 17th, my new grower and I mailed off our Health Canada paperwork, including the revoked license, and a copy of the letter sent to the old grower stating the license was officially revoked. We tracked the courier and it was received on February 18th. Health Canada tell me it'll take 8 to 10 weeks for processing. That delays the start of my crop by 2 months, added to the 3 months for the first growing cycle. Neither I nor my grower can afford to wait this long. We have to start now. I have to buy off the street while I'm waiting. I left a detailed message at the Health Canada Call Centre telling them I'm invoking the 30-day ruling in a decision made by Federal Court Justice Rulo from the 2000 case of Johnny Dupree versus Health Canada or Robert Neron versus Health Canada that the ministry could be compelled to respond to such important life and death issues within 30 days before the lack of action, presuming denial, could be judicially reviewed. I pointed out the date they received the paperwork, February 18th, and that they should produce a license or a letter stating legality of grow by March 20th, or I would be compelled to seek a judicial review in Federal Court of Appeal on whether these kinds of delays in medicine production are unconscionable enough to warrant judicial remedy. This affidavit is made in support of an application for an interim order of mandamus compelling the respondent to do its duty and immediately process the exemption information update, and in support of the application for judicial review of the 10 to 10, 12 weeks it takes Health Canada to switch from one authorized medical marijuana grower to another, Kathy Lewis. So I continue. Instructions. Be ready for serving and filing in Toronto Monday or Tuesday next week. Alan Young called me the circus lawyer for my propensity to place as many victims in front of a judge at the same time as possible. And with the addition of Derek Francisco and maybe another, Gord Strickland, it'll have a greater impact if you're all complaining together than if you were complaining alone. Derek's affidavit draft next. Maybe a third applicant. Gord. Everyone meets in Toronto for service, filing and press conferences, and two or three days later for the plea for justice against this malevolent bureaucracy. Derek's problem is that Health Canada made a 35-minute threatening phone call to his doctor in their campaign to keep marijuana prescriptions low, and the doctor cut his prescription to the 5 grams from 21 that the Health Canada medical opinion of their bureaucrats dictated. So Derek wants it back up. He was 75% cut. Gord Strickland seems they rejected his grower's application because he they said it took too long for him to get to the grow off. Some silly reason like that. So that is going on. So, 35 minutes after I posted Kathy's affidavit, she sends a message. This is gold or community currency, John Termel. Many, many thanks. I received all the documents today, exactly 30 days to the minute. And that was just last week that I left the message. They had a picture of you on their desks when they completed my forms, I'm sure. I'll keep this for future reference. Please let me know if I can do anything to assist in Derek's case. Regards, Kathy. And I went, hooray, no need for the rest of the paperwork. Then I, cont I sent her a message. I said, I feel like a Medpot Lone Ranger. <laughs> Had they reacted before the very last day, I'd have even been saved the time on the affidavit. No sweat. Winning without a fight is always sweet, even if they claim we can infer nothing from it. <laughs> nice to see government can jump. Then finally she answered, I cringed when I saw all your work on that affidavit pop up here. It was Canada Post at my door one second and your work the next. I'll buy you lunch, but I get to choose the beverages. You gave me the words to do this, and yes, Health Canada jumped. Good for us. Don't want to steal your intellectual property, though. Are you used to being that effective? Kathy. So I answered, almost scary, isn't it? Well, I got them to drop the charges against 4,000 people. Getting them to avoid a court fight over their slow work seemed a pretty good bet, given our past. But also, you had the backbone to play a scary card. If you want to read about Backbone, see Derek's refusal to an offer of getting everything back after he'd been charged, if he would only plead guilty, and then see them give everything back and withdrawing the charges when he wouldn't take the deal. So, 
Seems Derek got his seized pot back a fourth time. An officer confiscated some last week and Derek got it back today. Fourth time must be a record. So, Kathy, now you know how to defend yourself against an obstructive bureaucracy. Savor your victory. It's up on my wall, too. <laughs>